Hi everyone, this is Dale Guffey. This is What to Watch for this week when our focus is on the movie Dark City, our last movie to prominently feature aliens and how they interact with humans. And from the textbook, we're focusing on chapter two, which is a chapter focusing on a term known as mise-en-scene, a French term. This is a very visual chapter. Please make sure as you go through it that you're looking at the pictures and also at the captions. There's some excellent examples in there. And I'd like to start by talking about the textbook a little bit. This material covers, as I said, it's a French term, mise-en-scene. And it, it's an old term from the theater which translates into placing on stage. This is all about physical setting, including decor, how items are framed and photographed, how action is staged. This will also talk about some technical things such as aspect ratio and the development of widescreen technology. If you've ever seen a movie that's letterboxed that has the black bars at the top and the bottom of the screen, this will explain why. Within the frame, there are certain places that our eye goes more naturally. The center of the picture, the center of the frame, is usually reserved for items that are most important because we read from left to right. Right is traditionally thought of as the stronger side. That's usually where we're going to see the hero or your more powerful character. The left is usually reserved for the weaker side. Villains, your more insignificant characters. The top of the screen is usually thought to be more powerful than the bottom of the screen. Think of heads as having more importance than feet. Now, these are just guidelines. They can be flip-flopped, and often when they are flip-flopped, there's a reason for it. If you see the hero coming in from the left, which is traditionally the weaker side of the screen, and staying there as opposed to crossing over to the stronger right side, the director is usually making some kind of statement about there. Maybe we can't trust him. Maybe he actually is a villain. We just think he's a hero. That sort of thing. We're also going to cover composition and design, balance and imbalance within the, the frame. The picture here is a still shot from Dark City. Jennifer Connelly, you'll notice, is over on the right side of the screen, which is usually more powerful. The other character in the black coat, hat and coat is regressed into the background. It's interesting to look at what dominates the frame. Our eyes are, are caught by movement, so movement usually is, is more active, of course, than stillness. We'll talk about things like loose framing versus tight framing. The big thing to keep in mind is nothing is there by accident. If it's in the frame, it belongs in the frame. Closer shots, by the way, are generally thought to be tighter. Longer ones are usually thought to be looser. We'll talk about things like photographing an actor in the different positions, such as full front or profile or the back to the camera, and what those can mean. And we also talk about things about distance between characters and objects. What's the relationship? Often we can get clues of how the characters or the character relates to an object sometimes through how close they are or how far apart they are. We'll also talk about things like open and closed forms. It's a good chapter. Um, they even finish up with something called the 15 questions to ask when you're analyzing a scene. And after they go through the questions, they apply it to a single shot from Fritz Lang's movie, M. Fritz Lang, remember, is the fellow who came up with Metropolis back in the 20s. I've included a link here to one student's take on the 15 elements. And there are also some good review questions in there as well. So let's talk some about the movie, Dark City. Dark City was released in 1998. It was directed by Alex Proyas who you may know from a movie called The Crow, which came out a few years before. Um, good, very dark movie, visually very dark. Dark City is an example of something that's called neo-noir. Film noir is a term that we had way back at the very beginning. Shots tend to be very dark, very high contrast. The darks are really dark, the lights are really light. And again, this is our last film that focuses on aliens. Paper 3 is assigned this week, which will deal with you comparing and contrasting all four movies that deal with aliens. That, of course, includes Alien, Aliens, Imposter, and this week's Dark City. More about that as we get through. The plot of Dark City can be a little hard to follow because it's dealing with memory and manipulation of memory. Please make sure you watch it twice. It'll really help you. 
the first time you'll probably just be trying to get straight who's who and what's going on. A couple of things to watch for. I picked Dark City for this chapter because it just has such a lush mise-en-scene. There's a lot to see and I wanted to help you out by suggesting a couple of things. First off, look for clocks. Actual clocks, designs that look like clockwork. You'll see a lot of swirls like fingerprints or the inner workings of clocks. This is a fairly common theme to, that gets used in film. Think all the way back to Metropolis and you'll you know what I mean here. So look for clocks. Also pay attention to time. Not just clocks that measure time but also the time period. Film noir was very popular from the 30s through the 1950s. At least the early 1950s. And this movie borrows a lot from that. There are a lot of old time elements in costuming, the cars that are shown, the interior design, things like that. And time, of course, also serves as contrast. Shakespeare once famously said in a play, or had Hamlet say in a play, all the world's a stage. And because this movie deals with memory and manipulation, a lot like imposter, but in a different way, it's important to keep in mind what's real and what's just staged. Also, this movie has a lot in common with The Matrix, if you ever saw that. Dark City was released a year earlier. Keep that in mind. It came first. One other thing that's significant in this is place. There will be a lot of references to a place called Shell Beach. And it's important to ask yourself, what does this mean? What does it signify? Is it a symbol for something? Keep in mind, other films in this group have also had some significant use of place, whether it was the ship in Alien or Sutton Woods back in Imposter. So be on the lookout for clocks, for time, and for Shell Beach. By the way, curious fact that's worth knowing, Kiefer Sutherland's in this movie. There's a picture of him. He plays a character named Daniel Schriber. There was a real Daniel Schriber. Very interesting fellow. I've included a link there in case you want to learn a little more about him. Their behavior is not necessarily similar, but I'll leave it up to you to figure out what I mean. So we've talked about chapter two. We've talked about the movie. Let's talk about paper number three. This is due by midnight on Sunday, April 1st. Not an April Fool's joke. I need it by then. This is a compare and contrast of the aliens and science fiction films you've seen. I've already put details for you up in the papers and rubrics folder in Dropbox and linked it through the assignments tab, which is where you'll submit the paper. Nothing very different from what you've done before. You just have more movies to talk about. Therefore, I gave you a longer length as a requirement because you have four movies to discuss. I don't want you skimping. Aside from that, I'll leave it up to you. Call me or email me if you have any questions whatsoever, okay? Now, Dark City is a neo-noir. It's very dark. It tends to be kind of gloomy, so it's time after this to shift gears. So coming soon, next week as a matter of fact, we're going to switch gears and we're going to go over to a movie called The Fifth Element from 1997. We'll also cover Chapter 6 with this one. The Fifth Element is always a fun one to show to a class because it takes a completely different take on science fiction. So far, most of what we've seen has been serious, it's been action-oriented, or it's been gloomy. And that's not the only way to do science fiction. The Fifth Element is just chock full of bright colors and humor. It definitely has action elements, but, it, but it's also funny. It has a couple of scenes also that are just downright gorgeous that I think you'll enjoy. So that's coming soon. This week you have the moving, look over the chapter, you have a paper to get ready for me. So go get to it, enjoy, happy viewing, and I'll talk to you soon.